Who do we serve? Who do you serve? Do we serve God? Or do we serve false gods? The gods of money. The gods of food. The gods of prestige. The gods of athletic success. Who is your God? Who do you desire to truly serve? In our first reading today, Joshua gathers the tribes of Israel and he puts it very bluntly. He says, either serve the Lord or don't. Stop straddling this line. Serve the Lord or serve the God of the Amorites. But no more in between. It's giving no one any justice or glory. And so he asks them straight up, who are you going to serve? He says, I know for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Of course, Israelites respond in a politically correct way, don't they? Because, well, they have to. Oh, we're going to serve God. Sure. That sounds good. Good answer. They want us to say. Of course, we too have sometimes had this question asked to us, don't we? Who do we serve? Now, of course, today you're here. You're saying, well, Father, we're here. We're at Mass. We're pretty much staying awake. We're going to serve God. Okay, on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, it's easy to do that when you're here. What are you going to do at 10 o'clock tonight? Who are you going to serve then? Well, on Wednesday, when you go to work and you have to deal with that coworker of yours that you just don't get along with. Or Friday night when your buddies say, hey, let's have another drink. Who do we serve then? Who are we serving? Of course, we desire to serve God. But we know that following his ways sometimes can be challenging because he has commandments for us to follow. Not to hurt us, by the way, but to truly give us freedom. Freedom from sin. And there'll be challenging times in our life where we're going to question. Even doubt creeps into our faith a little bit, into our life. And we say, does God even exist? Why do I offer up these sacrifices? Maybe there'll be a time in our life, though, that someone passes away, a sickness. Maybe this recent scandal in the church is causing us to be challenged. And we can feel like the disciples did in the Gospel of John today, can't we? This saying is hard, who can accept it? These commandments are hard, who can accept it? And Jesus says, what? Yes, it can be hard, but my Father is with you. And if you follow me, I will grant you eternal life. You know, when crises of faith arise in our life, what we are called to do is to look back and to see all that God has done for us. This is what the Israelites did. They looked back and they saw that God is the one who took them out of slavery. God is the one who brought them into the promised land and gave them all that they needed. And so they were, were they going to serve him or not? Of course, for the disciples, here they are, and they had just seen him feed 5,000 men. They just heard him say, whoever eats on my flesh will live forever. And they had seen plenty of other miracles as well. And yet they say, the saying is hard, who can accept it? And what happens? Many of his disciples, it says what? Many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Another interpretation would be many of his disciples returned to their former way of life because they drew away from God. I know I'm not the only one that experiences this. But one of the saddest things that I experienced as a priest, and I'm sure as a parishioner, is looking around and saying, where did so-and-so go? They used to follow God. They used to come to Mass every Sunday. They even spent time in the Adoration Chapel. And yet they've fallen away from their faith. What happened? Of course, what we're called to do is to pray for them. We pray that they make a return that they draw near to God and not be like the disciples who return to their former ways of life. Because at first they said, yes, God, we are going to follow you. 
But then that difficult time arose in their life or a false god took over and they gradually drew away. How do we stay close to God? We must look back and say, look at all he's done for us. Look at how great he is. How much he loves us. Even now in your mind, you should be thinking about this. How has God showed his love to me in my life? How has he revealed himself to me? And always have that near our minds with any doubt or challenge or crisis of faith comes in. We can go back to him as a rock. Of course, Jesus asked the disciples a question after many of them left. He looks up at his 12 apostles. And he simply states, and I imagine he looked up with his head, he raised his head up, looked around and saw them left, and he said this, do you also want to leave? Talk about Jesus showing his humanity. I imagine tears are almost in his eyes. People abandoning him, drawing away from him, and him simply looking up and saying, do you also want to leave? Of course, what a great response Simon Peter has. Although he does flee from God eventually, but he comes back. But what a great response he has. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Master, to whom shall we go? This, of course, should be our response as well. When any time doubt creeps in, be it a challenge of faith, be it a dark night of the soul, be it moving on to another interior castle in our spiritual life, the temptation can be what? We just leave it all behind. We go back to our former ways of life. But we know that doesn't bring us fulfillment. That doesn't bring us joy. It doesn't bring us God. And so we must respond as Simon Peter does. Master, to whom shall we go? Of course, this is what the Israelites said to Joshua. But Joshua said, really? You're really going to follow God this time? No, you're not. I know what you're going to do. You're just saying this because I want you to say it. And they say, no, we promise, we are witnesses that we are going to finally follow God. And Joshua says, you truly mean this. Not just in words, but in actions, you're going to follow God. And they say, yes, we are witnesses. And so Joshua makes a covenant with the people of Israel and of God, of course. And he says, we are now witnesses. I put statues in this covenant together and that this will be a sign of our following of God. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you to have a sign someplace in your house, on your body, wherever it may be, that you are a follower of God. Be it wearing a scapular, be it wearing a cross around your neck. For me as a priest, I wear a collar, which means I'm a slave to God. This is a reminder. In your house, have a cross. So when you look at that, you can say, this is who I follow. This is whom I love. And of course, this is something we have to choose every single day. How long have you been a Christian for? How long have you been a Catholic for? Since I woke up this morning, and I decided, I am going to follow him. I am going to serve the Lord. And no more serving these false gods. And yes, I may have fallen away in the past. Yes, I may have drawn back. But I know that he is a merciful God who loves us. As we continue, as we finish, conclude the spread of life discourse, we look back and see all that God has done for us. And we could probably say the same thing that Simon Peter said. Master. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe that and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God who loves me in the most deep and profound way, who desires for me to be with you, who will do anything for me because you are my God and I am your son. I am your daughter who desire with everything I have to serve you and you alone.